Uh, good morning. Uh, this is lesson number two on the programme, and we're looking at business growth with particular emphasis today on businesses becoming a public limited company. Uh, so, first of all, just a quick uh, knowledge recall. Can you, this time, no, it's not a matching exercise, but can you write down the key term which correctly explains the definition? each one of those um, so can you pause the screen while you do this please right so here are the answers hopefully this is all stuff that you well, stuff that we did the last lesson actually I most of it so just feeling confident about the uh, the definitions um, the first one is perhaps one that we've looked at um, longer in the past market share so that's percentage of the market supplied by a business so if tesco which we're doing later on has a market share of 28 percent that means that 28 out of every 100 pounds spent at supermarkets in the united kingdom 28 pound of it is spent at tesco tesco has the highest market share of any business supermarket business so there you've got, uh, so again, pause the screen to just to make sure that you've got the answers. Uh, so what we're going to look at today, we're going to, hopefully by the end of the lesson, you're going to be confident about what a public limited company is and the advantages and disadvantages. And then once again, we will complete an exam uh, style question. So quick starter, can you, Pause the screen and um, answer those questions, please. So there you go, there you've got your answers in red. So what we should be comfortable um, about there is ownership, sole traders, partnerships, private limited companies and public limited companies, which we're going to look at today limited liability when the owners of the business which are always will always be in this case shareholders are only only responsible to what they've invested so how much they actually paid for the shares so ultimately all they can lose is the value of the shares two types of businesses that have limited liability are private and public limited companies and that is why they're called limited companies because of limited liability um, which two types of businesses have unlimited liability sole trader and partnership so there the partners will be equally responsible for the debts of the company unless they have formed a deed of partnership which may say how the profits are split and how the who's responsible for the debts but generally speaking without any agreement um, if there's a partnership and um, they owe a hundred thousand pound and there's two partners each partner would be responsible for fifty thousand pound of the debt even if it's the other partner who uh, got who, who built up the debts so that's why you need trust when you decide if you're going to work with a partnership and the franchise um, the right given by the franchisor, which is normally the large business selling a franchise, which could be McDonald's, to the franchisee, which could be the individual person buying the rights to sell McDonald's product, generally at an individual restaurant or drive through and they trade under their brand name. So just pause the screen to make sure that you've got all those answers correct. right so what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at a public limited company so you know businesses grow it's a huge um opportunities um they, they can grow organically or inorganically through um the own success of the business which is internal or mergers and takeovers of other businesses which is external um so all this developing new products 
the R and D stands for research and development. So all the costs involved with making, get, um, inventing a product, then the innovation, then getting the product to market can be very, very expensive. So that is all called research and development, getting the product right for the customers. Mergers and takeovers, all this could be costly. Remember, a merger is when two companies join together. A takeover is when one company buys another. Um, so to fund this, many businesses, to fund expansion, change from becoming a private limited company to a public limited company. If you remember from your work on private limited companies, a the, the reason it's called private is because you have to, the, the shareholders have to be invited into the business. So that um, if there are six part owners of a private limited company and they want to expand, they can choose who they want to um, buy shares in the business and they can ask them to buy shares in the business. So in, in a way, they're keeping control and they're trying to make sure that the people who invest in the business who share their values and beliefs about how they want to develop the business. A public limited company, on the other hand, is, and as the name public um, signifies, anybody can buy shares in the public limited companies. Uh, huge amounts of businesses uh, in the UK are public limited companies. Companies such as Tesco, McDonald's, will literally have hundreds of thousands of share, small shareholders. Um, so instead of having a small number of invited shareholders, a public limited company, the main difference is that anybody can buy shares. And the process of this is called flotation, um, where it makes it so that you, you're selling your shares to the public. You're making an offer to the public to buy, uh, to sell shares. They must have offer at least 50,000 worth of shares to the public. In most cases, it's considerably more than this because it, it wouldn't be cost effective just to sell that amount of shares. So these uh, public limited companies tend to be large businesses who want to continue to grow. As I said before, a PLC, which is the abbreviation for a public limited company, can sell shares to the general public and then they're listed, they're put on the stock exchange. So then um, shares in the business, because I can buy shares in Tesco or McDonald's, and then I can sell them, and then I sell them on the stock exchange. Normally I would use a stockbroker, but who would buy and sell shares for me, but that um, that's where they've bought and sold. So. Fundamentally, the key difference that we've got to be aware of is anyone can buy shares in a public limited company, whereas a private limited company is only a small, generally a small number of invited shareholders. So if we're thinking about the advantage um, of being a, becoming a public limited company, number one, the flotation, the selling of the um, shares on the stock markets allow them greater access to finance. Um, because the, uh, hundreds of thousands of people may have bought a small number of shares. They tend to be large businesses, uh, it, so then it's easy to get finance from the bank. So if you're a public limited company, you've got a reputation, and because of this, um, you, uh, business, uh, banks were more likely to trust them, so it may be easy to get finance from the banks, and at a lower interest rate as well, because it's seen as less of a risk. Public limited companies can increase their status. Uh, so it's um, in the public as well as in financial institutions such as banks. And so then that then can make, make them more people trust the business. And then you, you get exposure through the stock exchange. So again, you're creating publicity, really. The problem with it, it, it can be expensive because um, you have to pay fees and it, all this can cost a lot of money and there's no guarantee of success. Uh, so the key issue is uh, the general public can buy shares, uh, meaning it can be open to a 
takeover. So from previous lessons on takeovers, if you're a public limited company, anyone can buy shares in the business, which could be another business. And then they can gradually they can get into a position where they bought a controlling in, influence on the business, which is over 50% of the shares, and then they've taken over the business. Um, you've got financial information is freely available, so you can see them, anyone can see them. So I can just find out as much information as I need to about Tesco with regard to their profits, how quickly they pay their suppliers, um, what debt they have. So it, I, I could just find that information at the click of a button. And then there are rules and regulations that they must follow. Right, so now you've got um, main activity. Um, you've got a question here on um, um, Snapchat. So you're picking which one of the best options should they consider. Again, we've got your typical uh, nine mark question to follow. Um, you, if you remember, crowdfunding is when you've got a small, uh, lots of small investors putting, um, um, buying a part of the business, and then justify which one of those is the best. We've got we're giving you hints there, and then as a research activity. Um, investigate what's happened to Snapchat now. What type of ownership do they have? 